dark and rolling hills of the planet Cephalus spilled over one another and washed up at the feet of an army commanded by the galactic king of space, Lepus. Or so he thought. You see, he was the kind of rich noble that wanted to be king. But he wasn't even a prince. It was just that he wanted to be. But he never got what he wanted. Lepus had took the long fall down the stairs of a god complex. But now, he marches his army of bandits across the galaxy to terrorise and marauder planet after planet, plundering and conquering everywhere he goes, enslaving race after race. His empire is enough to rival a king, and thus he came to meet the Lord of Time himself, the last remaining, part cyborg, part Time Lord, the Doctor, an old acquaintance. piercing, whirring noise of machinery on metal unsettles the dust and disrupts the atmosphere as sparks fly. The glow of orange illuminates and reflects off the glass holes for eyes in the visor. In a break from the heavy duty work, the clink of metal spurs chimes as the soldier walks into the room. Talking in a robotic, gravelly voice, he announces, Sir, you are needed at the fort entrance. There are visitors on beast back at the perimeter line. Metal creaks as the working cyborg sits up to attention. He lifts the visor to reveal a half and half face, with a robotic eye glowing red, while smoke pulses out of a hidden pipe round the back of his head. On his human side, a weathered, battered face looks up, sweating profusely, and his curly brown hair settles and comes to rest, having been ruffled by the visor. He carries a heavy fur cloak on his back. The doctor stands to meet his soldier, cyborg to cyborg. I'll be right behind you, assures the doctor. Sir, replies the soldier in militaristic fashion. The soldier swiftly turns and marches out of the room, with the clinking of his metal spurs following him out as the haunting noise echoes around the stone-walled castle chamber. Flanked by cyborg guards, draped in armour and taking care of guns ready to fire in their hands, the doctor approaches carrying his heavy metal boots and flattening purple grass clad with dew. He has just crossed the moat which now finds itself occupied by the Doctor's army. Taking up all available space, thousands of soldiers stand in formation. This is a challenge. The fort of the Doctor has been approached, and it should not be breached. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? asks the Doctor, in sarcastic tones. Lepus stares back. Captain of his band of pirates, assembled in their own army stance, almost ready for war. Lepus is decorated with a cape, which descends all the way to the ground and trails behind him like a dress. He is a man of possessions. He is the kind of leader who would walk down an aisle formed by his army like a bride, and get married to his glory at the end by slaying his opposition. You do not remember me, asks Lepus. You mustn't have been much good if I don't remember you, challenges the doctor. Well, let's cut straight to it then. I'm Lepus. Hello, announces the marauder, who sarcastically extends his hand for the doctor to shake. Nice to meet you, Lepus. I'm the doctor and I have no interest in whatever business you've come here on, so I'd like you to clear off and never bother me again. Does that sound like terms we can agree on? Well, you see, I had other ideas. I'm here to apprehend your fort and the planet you stand on as a whole. How does that sound? Asks Lepus. Are you challenging me to a fight? Asks the doctor. That's basically what I'm getting at, yes. Replies the sarcastic, antagonizing Lepus. Sir? Pipes up a bodyguard. Since when has it been your grounds to talk? Replies the doctor, angrily. Uh, of course. My apologies, sir offers back the bodyguard. Now then, if your role is to fight, surely it is only right for me to offer to defend, says the doctor. 
That's the way a fight goes, Doctor. Spits back Hippos. You and your puny army have no grounds for being here. If it is slaves you want, then you have very much come to the wrong place. I'll bring the fight to you. Prepare your rebellion, and I'll prepare your annihilation, warns the Doctor. I'll be waiting, teases Leapus. The Doctor marches like a general through the long, straight and narrow corridors of his castle fortress. You do know what you're doing here, sir? Asks a bodyguard. If I didn't, then we would all be screwed, wouldn't we? They turned up on your doorstep asking for war, and you're just going to give it to them like that? Asks the bodyguard. I will not be bullied into handing over a planet, soldier. This will not be a war, it will merely be sport, explains the doctor. Fair enough, sir, replies a soldier, having to hold back from arguing with his superior. Now, man the boundaries, load your weapons, and prepare for battle. Summon your comrades, and like I said, prepare, orders the doctor. Sir, replies the soldier. And with that, the doctor is alone, weary and concerned. He takes a heavy breath and leans on the back wall. It is dark. The red glow of his eye is the only thing to illuminate the corridor. He sighs, he thinks, and he retreats into his chambers. He sits down and settles with more clinks of metal. The cyborg reaches to his right and picks up his crown. He stares into it as it gleams. It hands back a reflection of the Doctor, who felt he could finally see himself for what he was. He didn't see fire and war. He didn't see his army spearheaded by himself. He saw nobility. He saw himself wearing a mane of pride. He saw himself as a destabiliser of cyber warships and Dalek motherships. He saw himself for who he was, a Time Lord. Except, it wasn't quite there. Not on the surface. Instead, he was staring as a war chief, a war mongol, wrapped up in reputation and choked by pressure. Suffocated by the wrong kind of pride, and bearing his casualties on his armour-like cybernetic outer shell. And he stared back. Shamefully, deep inside, he stared back at himself. And he reaffirmed he couldn't just lay down and be bullied to have his planets that he rightfully owned apprehended at the drop of a hat. But that was his overriding self. And he knew it. Both knew it. The Doctor and his reflection in a standoff against each other, not where either wanted to be, each telling each other different things. But that overriding self always returned. It always came back, if it had ever left. That overriding sense of pride. The wrong kind of pride, pride of reputation, and upholding that reputation. He sat in his own chambers as king of his castle. His fortress, which isn't a daycare for overzealous brutal warlords who wanted to increase their property portfolio and slave empire. His fortress was named that way for a reason. His fortress was there to be defended. The reflection leaves. It had done its part now. And the crown is dropped with a clang onto the table beside him. The doctor stands to his feet in all his finery. He drops his fur-cladded cloak to the ground, kicking up dust. He walks over to his weaponry, picking up a gun of his choice from a glass cabinet, like an old earth human arming himself with a cutlass from a mantelpiece. And the Doctor marches out to lead his army into war. Heavy metal boots stomp like thunderclaps over the rotten wood moat, almost buckling under the pressure. At the front, leading the charge, the Doctor. Well, you wanted war? I take up your offer. We fight to the death. I don't want prisoners. The winner takes all. The fort and the planet, announces the Doctor. For the fort, comes the reply from Lepus. And for the planet, continues the Doctor. 
a war cry, and shouts of charge as both armies proceed into battle. Lepus and his ragtag bunch of fighters ride upon the backs of beasts from far off lands as the Doctor's cyborg army advances on foot. And the rasping fire of bullets begins. Like out of a video game. Right out of the gate, bang, 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 bang. Fighters fall, soldiers wounded. Beasts crash into the ground, fighting turns almost physical as guns go flying. Firing bullets out of control. Anyone could get hit at any moment, as yet more guns fire crystalline bullets into the opposition, piercing enemy lines, breaking up formation. All out war. Chance of death? High. Very high. Mortality rate? Rising. Rapidly. Scarily. It begins to rain. Bullets sprinkling out of the sky. A heavy downpour of fear and floods of light lost. A cloud of onrushing cyborgs swarms a squadron of Lepus's men, who send bullets firing out of their rifles to answer the oncoming fire. Another squadron burns as improvised devices fly through the air, breaking through the line of gunfire defence. The butt of a rifle knocks one fighter out to the right. The same gun takes a man out behind with another bullet. The cyborg falls from his own men's answering bullets reaching down. No one is safe. Another squadron of noble, experienced, determined fighters, Lepus's men, are lined up like they're about to play football, but are charging into war, like they're running a race. Who can make it further than the fort before they were gunned down? Bang! One down. Bang! Bang! Another two. Bang! 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 Flurry of fire as yet more fall. Bang! 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 Nearly all gone. A frontrunner can be seen now, trying his hardest to keep shooting, keep riding his luck, keep fighting in this intense scrap. But the cyborgs don't stop. They continue to press, they continue to charge, and they continue to push as more soldiers continue to fall. But in prime, as well as bloodshed. Bang! Last man down. Won the race, but not the fort. Spontaneous, mixed with tactic. Relentless, never-ending gunfire, crashing in like a storm. Picking up anything in its path like a hurricane. Sweeping up anything it comes across like a tsunami. And all the cacophony though, the fighting continues. And it continues long into the night. The Doctor and his army are now behind enemy lines. But they are being closed in. Time ticks, counting down like a bomb, a countdown to destruction. Prepare for doomsday. A heavy defeat is being assembled. The Doctor approaches his general, the human side of whom's face is etched with fear. General, have we a foothold? asks the Doctor. Oh, we have a foothold, but well, there is no saying we can hold it replies the General. How do you mean? asks the Doctor, becoming more and more concerned. It is concerning, sir. Not only do we have a heavy death toll, but we are being surrounded, explains the General. We breached enemy lines. Now let's finish them off, suggests the Doctor. It doesn't exactly work like that, sir. Our men have been closed in and are being cut off. We'll be completely surrounded, explains the General. The Doctor fails to reply. He can't. He is frozen with fear. He is facing a heavy defeat, and he can't let this happen. Sir, we went to war with over 50,000 men. Well, now we are left with little over half of that, and they are completely surrounded. This is annihilation, a doomsday event. We were asking for it, you know, sir, continues the General. But the Doctor is stuck where he is. Screams of soldiers in their final moments echo around his mind, and the screams continue to amplify. They continue to ramp up inside his headspace. But the Doctor sees faces. Not just of his own men. He thinks of Lepus. Those first words about recognition. The Doctor did recognise him. He knew it. I recognised him, says the Doctor, as he struggles to come to terms with that. Like he'd taken a bullet as well. 
The sickening, jaunting feeling comes over him, like vertigo. Sir, you recognise who? asks the general. As the rumbles of war continue, muffled in the background, the doctor attempts to regain his balance, swaying, going one way and then the other. He is sick, and he is scared. Sir, are you alright? asks the general, even doubting his own words. I recognise him. He's an old friend. What are we doing? asks the doctor, believing that this was in fact mere sport. Well, it's too late now, the general replies sarcastically. But this is sport. That's just what it is. This isn't war. We can't lose this. I hated him. I hated him, explains the doctor. Sir? asks the general. We've got to do something. I have got to do something, urges the doctor. Sir, with all due respect, leave this to me, says the general. I don't know if I can do that, replies the doctor. He stares down at the sonic screwdriver for his arm, and he sets back out onto the battlefield. He takes a deep breath, and then he takes a step. Treading carefully, he weaves in and out of oncoming gunfire, back into the fold. A cacophony of death and danger, bouncing and leaping down his ears, beating his drum and terrorising his mind. Screams rattle as his men go flying around him, hurling through the air from blast, shot back from approaching, shouts of absolute terror of fall back and pull back. Bang, bang, bang. The death toll creeps up on him. The doctor, a picture of guilt. His eyes wander to a squadron under fire. He can't bear it. This shouldn't have happened. Sitting ducks, surrounded, cornered are his men. Valiant in their charge, helpless in their defence. Mortality rate, spiralling out of control. 20,000 men trapped. On all sides, outnumbered, picked off. Leaps his men are shooting at the cyborgs like shooting fish in a barrel, diving for their life, desperately shooting back. Bang, bang, bang. Men down. Bang, bang, bang. And more. When will it end? Will it even end at all? The soldiers start to put their arms on each other, keeping each other close. Is this it? Bang, bang, bang. The doctor can't take it. Bang, 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 bang and a device caps it off. The doctor stares down at his arm, the ultimate weapon of destruction, and he has the power to use it. He has the power to end this. He has to finish this. Bang, 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 now. A solitary tear abseils down the doctor's face, pushing aside the beads of sweat. He looks up, with fear in his eyes, almost as scared as his men. He can't do this to them any more than to himself. If he presses this button and activates this setting on his arm, it ends. But everyone goes with it. Bang, bang, bang. He can't cope with this. He can't make this decision. Bang, 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 bang. He begins to sob. He takes one last look up at his general. He salutes. He knows himself that he will survive. But he knows his guilt will be even bigger than the amount of men that he would lose. Not just men. His men. His army. His responsibility, including his general. Bang! 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 He presses the button. It's over. Smoke rises. Metal chimes as he lies down on the ground. Through the thick, grey smog, the red of his eye on his blackened armour continues to glow. The cyborg is shaken and scared. He tentatively lifts his head. He looks up. He sees that it is done. He stands, slowly and creaking. His head alone creaks with an anguishing sound as it turns around to look upon the destruction. And the doctor looks upon his work. 
a solitary fire flickers and fights to stay alive. The last hope. The doctor stares into it and can only think to himself, more fire, more destruction, more pain, more anguish. Is that the way forward? He can only think to himself and wonder, in fear, of what is to come. Is that really who he is? He begins by retreating to his castle to negotiate with his crown.